So quick update. New addition to the fleet. 2020 Jeep Wrangler Sahara. Getting loaded up. Roll out. We'll see how well this works for the util utility purpose compared to the Expedition. Obviously, this is a smaller vehicle, less cubic feet of car cargo space, but it does have some usable space and a pretty boxy interior design that doesn't get wasted through some of the curves of the interior of other vehicle, larger vehicles that have more cubic space, but not really usable but this is this is the new jeep led headlights and remote start keyless entry tow package with the auxiliary buttons which is a pretty cool feature for some of the add-ons we're going to do this vehicle will see modifications we just picked it up yesterday and then over here we got the U-Haul hooked up to the Sprinter. And we're about to roll out. I'll be taking this and Michelle will be taking the Jeep. Have a little convoy down to Florida as we continue to unpack this place and get it ready for the next owner as we move on to phase I don't even know what phase number it is we're just moving on to the next phase beach phase stay tuned for more okay Pull up some. We're gonna go this way. Nope. Keep cutting, keep cutting.
Keep cutting. All right, straighten up. Turn your wheel to your right and back up. All right, go left. More, more, more. All right, back up. Straighten up. Back up. So far, so good. We've made it most of the way on this trip. Our first road trip with the uh, 2020 Jeep Wrangler Sahara four-door, two-liter turbo, four-cylinder, and towing a six by 12 U-Haul trailer. Not 100% sure on the trailer weight, but I would have to say that we are probably very close to the recommended weight limit according to U-Haul and the towing capacity of this vehicle. This is not by any means uh, the best way of transporting and towing, but the vehicle, this Jeep Wrangler is capable of towing but it is absolutely my last choice when it comes to towing uh, especially for long distances honestly it's not the like the worst option out there because I have seen some setups on the road that are sketchy at best but in my experience and the different vehicles that I have towed using uh, as well as other vehicles that I've towed 6x12 uh, rented U-Haul trailers with in comparison to the Jeep Wrangler the Jeep Wrangler's biggest downside is not the engine or the power or the torque or any of that we're actually checking fuel economy on this too on this trip to see what kind of NPGs we're getting with this trailer behind us at about 55 to 60 mile an hour. But uh, the biggest problem is just the weight and how this trailer can fling the Jeep around and any passing vehicle, any gust of wind, any turbulence whatsoever, and you are, you're just a kite in the wind, basically. So, uh, honestly, keeping it under 60 is pretty smooth. Keeping it under 55 and no problems at all, which 
you all would prefer you keep it under 55 based on the uh, sticker they got here on the side of the trailer it's backwards now but it's the right it's it's in the right direction when you look at it in your mirror but keeping this thing under 55 no issues whatsoever but uh, we've also been able to tow the same trailer with other vehicles you know at much higher speeds much smoother without being thrown around on the interstate or even on these back roads we're on 331 right now and uh it's not a major interstate but you can still feel it with the wind especially as you get over 60. 72 is the max 72 is the max i have i thought 75 would be capable would be possible but i've not been able to uh be ballsy enough yet to cross over 72. 72 is the point at which uh, the Jeep's telling you, you better you better chill out. Don't go any further. And then even at that, 72 is ideal conditions. No cars passing you on either side. Uh, very low wind tur turbulence. And you have to really stay on the throttle at 72 because even the slightest liftoff basically puts you into a uh, unstable situation. So we're gonna keep rolling here and need to hit the gas station as soon as possible. But when we get to the gas station, we'll crunch the numbers and see what the fuel economy looks like. Also in comparison to what the gauge reads on the center console on the dash. So trip, 297 miles. What happened to my MPGs? Sixteen point nine MPG. It says we got thirteen miles till empty. Good <laughs> thing we made it here. <laughs> So the gauge cluster MPG calculation, even though it was reset at the beginning of this trip, and also the, well maybe that might be at the tire size, may be a factor here. It said 17, 16.9 16 miles per gallon, but we're actually getting like 15.3 based on how many gallons we were able to put into the tank. 
right now filling up. 